If you're going to be recording audio, you're going to need some kind of way of getting it into your computer and into Logic. And usually that means an audio interface which can accept XLR and or quarter inch jack inputs. Now obviously there's no way I can give advice on how to set up every audio interface. There are many different devices out there. However, if you're considering buying an interface for the first time, I can recommend that you look for one that's class compliant with Mac OS X, which I believe most of them are now. Class compliance just means that the interface will pretty much plug and play with your Mac computer with very little or no setting up. And I've never had any problem with devices like those. So I just wanted to talk quickly about some of the options in Logic's audio preferences panel. And in particular, this one, the input output buffer size. This is a particularly key setting because it has a large impact on both your computer's use of processing power and a phenomenon known as latency. Basically, it works like this. With a large buffer size, the audio coming into your computer will take longer to be processed, recorded to disk and sent back out through monitor speakers or headphones. As you can imagine, the result of that can be to make the timing in your performances rather difficult. Imagine if you're recording a guitar over an already recorded drum track. The guitarist starts playing in time with the drums, but by the time the guitar signal's committed to disc, there's been a 20 millisecond delay. That's enough to make it sound like he's playing late and out of time. There would be a worse effect if the guitarist's listening to himself on his headphones as he's recording because there would be a disconnect between what he can feel his hands playing and the time it takes for that to be heard on his headphones. And that can be extremely distracting and lead to poor performances. So to minimize this effect, it's a good idea to use the smallest buffer size that you can. Unfortunately, smaller buffer sizes mean a greater CPU load for your computer because the computer has to process and deal with more packets of data and depending on your computer's processor speed, as well as factors like using CPU intensive plugins, that can lead to your computer running out of CPU and Logic will just throw up its hands and say, I can't do all of this stuff in time. And it will give you this dreaded error message. Um, and allowing performances to be interrupted is never a good thing. Software plugins, by the way, can introduce latency of their own. And while Logic's inbuilt plugins are generally very good at keeping that to a minimum, that's not always the case with third party plugins or if you have many plugins running at once. So, wherever possible, I like to work in two stages. First, to record or track any live parts, I set up the Logic project at its bare bones with as few plugins as possible. Maybe I'll just put a limiter on the output. to protect my monitor speakers and maybe give the singer or vocalist a bit of reverb. And at this stage I'll set a very low buffer of either 32 or 64 samples depending on what my computer can safely handle. 128 samples might be tolerable for less rhythmically dependent stuff like strings but in my book 256 is too much for recording it introduces significant noticeable latency. Once all the parts that I need are safely recorded, I can start adding plugins and mixing. At that point, I might need to go back to the preferences panel and raise the buffer size to something larger to reduce the CPU load. If at a later date I need to record more parts on a project that's already half mixed, I'll switch the buffer size down again and if I do that, I might need to bypass some CPU intensive plugins to make sure they don't push the processor use too high. So if you plan ahead a little bit and make this part of your workflow, the problem of latency is relatively easy to solve. It just takes a little bit of thought. <laughs>